November 2001, Microsoft's Alien Unit the Xbox is released alongside a select group of launch titles. If asked now, a good majority of those games probably wouldn't be recognized outside of small circles. Rapid fire question. Why are the controllers so big? Four ports, is that really needed? What sort of games are out for the Xbox? Do they even have a Mario-like mascot? All these questions sound a lot like a fifth summary of what Bungie's Halo Combat Evolved could be used for. Halo Combat Evolved was an advanced first-person shooter that dispensed more pleasure per moment than bullet through barrel. Halo Anniversary is essentially the original overhaul to the Xbox 360's specs with enhanced graphics, some extra features, and bonus content that will have you even popping in Halo Reach again. Uh, from the moment I was able to move around and assume the role of the Master Chief an immortalized war hero of intrigue, I mean, come on, the guy wears a helmet at all times, uh, you know, in the quick wit, the Halo universe expanded, and I was now just as much a part of it as the Marines who unsuredly uh, dodged flames aboard a militant spaceship. If that didn't cue you in, Halo takes place a few hundred years in the future. Humanity has begun to colonize away from Earth. Humans have come in contact with hostile alien species, collectively known as the Covenant. Weaponry is still a familiar basis, though. Vehicles, too. Uh, Master Chief is a top-tier soldier who has all access to any and everything the UNSC have to offer, or United Nations Space Command. Whether that be, uh, you know, an assault rifle, magnum, shotgun, sniper rifle, rocket launcher, or dibs on a vehicle, it's your choice. The previous mentioned Covenant have a unique array of weapons that are destructive to shield technology, whereas humans uh, are best against flesh. Unlike most shooters, each gun serves a purpose. Choose wisely, though, as you can only carry two weapons and a mess of grenades, which seems common by now, but uh, was a real game changer back in the day. A game can be chock full of features and can still be a letdown. The reality is, most topping leads to bloat. Combat Evolved was a mere technical trickery then, and Anniversary further highlights those feats now, keeping refinement to a bare minimal, in fact most of, uh, most of which is just aesthetic. Which is why I spent so much time discussing the original, this is the beloved Halo Combat Evolved of 2001, this is the game that so many gather around at LAN parties, this is the game that two buddies would take the time to play from beginning to end, over and over and over. Start up the campaign and hit the back button. Look what we have here. Surprise, the original graphics. Tapping it again only reverts it to the new specs. No loss there. Play with confidence. They didn't just keep the opening musical monk chant to make you think that this is it. You know, uh, though the audio has been remastered too, mind you. You can opt out in favor of the original soundtrack, though. Just look around through the menus. A lot of confusion has been stirred up as of late. To make it clear, the campaign is identical. From the spacey jumps to the gun reticules, even with the engine tweaks by Saber 3D, you'll still be able to spot that classic Needler animation, Ghost Jump Off a Wraith, and the glitch behind 343 Guilty Spark, just with the option of sleeker, more colorful graphics. The multiplayer segment is all Halo Reach's department, though, from the new Firefight map to the six iconic map remakes, uh, and I'll discuss a little bit more on that later. People argue, why pay more for an exact remake? Whereas another camp will argue, you call this a remake is nothing like the original. All I wanted was the exact game with better graphics, don't butcher it. Can't please both crowds, so they say. Microsoft and Saber Active sure did give a good try, though. Some of the new features are not the most brilliant. 3D is nice. Connect users are treated with privies akin to not that much more than that of an instructional booklet. Seems a kind of a bit extreme when you consider the price of the Connect and the, uh, the lack of functionality, but that's just really a topping. Introduced in Halo 2, skulls return and are tucked away one per level. Skulls can be toggled for further gameplay configurations upon discovery. Different skull, different option. Some make the game harder by reducing ammo intake, others add comical explosions and shifts in dialogue, which are actually pretty hilarious, mind you. If the new graphics don't merit a second playthrough, perhaps the terminals will. Uh, if you were a fan of the original, of course, and I assume one would be if they're looking this up, much like the skulls, terminals are hidden. As far as I know, there is one per campaign level, and it really helps to bond the player with the story. The second half of the game suffer from a bit of backtracking, and that is a theme that you'll see throughout the Halo games, but so be it. Anniversary's graphics attend to this fatigue by further separation, and they do this by choice amounts of weather and really great lighting. The levels weren't bad per se, 
a second serving just could have been passed, as the first offerings had so much to marvel over, people wanted more and more and more. One of the drawbacks with the retouch graphics is that you might slightly get caught up on objects that, for whatever reason, just don't transition. Most often these include small rocks and tree roots. The AI has held up, though, very well in fact over the years. If a troop is in combat alert, chances are they'll just poke fun at it with comic relief. Seeing the marines move the same as yesteryear under a new looking glass is comical in its own right, really. Covenant grapple to cover and evade explosions in the finest way a game of this age can handle. Still, not familiar with the Covenant. A quick glance will expose which ones are leaders, which are the fodder, and which ones to keep an eye out for, much like Reach. Art-wise, this Halo has the most saturated color palette, whereas the first was a bit more dry and authentic. Uh, one could actually make a comparison between Anniversary and Halo 3, and uh, it wouldn't even be that much of a stretch to compare it to the upcoming Halo 4. It's, it's, it's much more colorful, it's more bold. Anyways, this game takes advantage of great dynamics. Switch between the new and old. Covenant, as mentioned above, now are scaled to reach cast. Ever see a lowly grunt up the ranks to adorn a leader like Status? Well, it's still a grunt and you're still going to shoot it down with ease. Elites go from intimidating to more ferocious as the headwear they adorn expands. Flood are spooktastic, shuffling limbs, green drips, incomprehensible growls. They still mock you with their horror and they bring it into the mix in such a cataclysmic way. The six multiplayer maps are all remakes and look stunning though. Ratio-wise, they are not pinpoint to the originals, and in fact, one of the two PC ported maps, Timberland, renamed Ridgeline, has been scaled back. For what it's worth, Reach's gameplay is a blast on these maps. In my book, Reach had great gameplay elements but lackluster maps, and some balancing issues, but I'm not going to really discuss that here. Anniversary not only contributes with these awesome maps, it also enables as a modified roster of game types more in sync with Comet Evolve's damage tables and speed, exposing Reach's flexibility and depth. Good news is Halo 4 will be tapping into the, uh, a modified engine variant for this. For each tributary map, there is a faintly modified newer edition. All maps can be altered via Forge 2.0. A map editor is not a map maker though, keep that in mind. So, at the end of the day, this game was released at the asking price of $40. If you can make do without the bonus activation skull code available to those who purchase the game new, a used copy could probably be had for dirt cheap. For people who argue value, look at what you get. The full Halo Combat Evolved campaign with co-op and online co-op, though the offline is a bit hidden. You gotta set the preference to the local in the menu if you wish to play offline split screen. A slew of multiplayer maps for Reach, an additional firefight map, Forge still intact, new multiplayer hoppers, skulls, achievements, even extra multiplayer ones, remastered audio, and the newly introduced terminals. Lastly, here's a list of the multiplayer maps for those who aren't aware at this point, which I'm surprised. I, wow. Uh, Beaver Creek. Battle Canyon, Hang'em High, High Noon, Damnation, Penance, Timberland, Ridgeline, Prisoner, Solitary, Headlong, Breakneck, Insulation 04, uh, New Firefight map. And so before I ultimately end this, I just gotta say, uh, my favorite multiplayer map out of them all is uh, the remake of Headlong, which oddly enough is actually a Halo 2 map. Um, I really liked the original one more though. I like the orange skies, that, that kind of, uh, the new boss I feel like you didn't get to fully explore in Halo 2 and they kind of tease more in ODST. I, uh, I really wanted boarding action. That was one of my favorite Halo 1 maps. And I, I personally have this philosophy, I mean, uh, this general belief about Halo maps where Halo 1, the maps weren't perfect, but they were really fun to play on. Halo 2 had amazing maps. Halo 3, Felt a little bit like the runoff of Halo 2, but they were still good. Reach's maps were just too competitive. They were often, you know, uh, very dull, very drab. But uh, I'd like to hear you guys' views on Halo maps in general. Feel free to comment. Thanks.